Where did that Hey, hey, hey. What's up, everyone? Hello. How we doing? Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Welcome to the live stream. I'm gonna hey, be taking cover here. songs. Maybe I'll just play Wonderwall for you guys the whole time. What the hell? I actually don't know how to play Wonderwall. Right. Yeah, promise not to lose it, though. Um, hi, Gianna. Hi. <laughs> You're straight on camera. Hi, Rebecca. Like hi, Lorianne. Who else is on here? Lorianne. Olivia. Carrie. Lorianne. That's my mom's name. Lorianne de Hoyos. Oh, no. Hoyos. Is that, did I pronounce that right? I hope pretty. I did. Guys, come on in here. Let's see. Kelly, Ashley, hey everyone. Brad McCoy's on, that's cool. You know why? Because Brad McCoy is right here. Hello! There's Lacey. Hey, we got some new faces you guys might not have met before. That's Mike. You guys know Gianna? Oh my god, we got two mics! And we got we got this mic. What's up? Who else is Jenna? Did you ever meet Jenna? I don't think so. And Amy. And then the star of the show. There he is. There he is. Everybody. Mr. Hey, Finch. <laughs> Mr. Finch. Oh well, hey, welcome. We're going to have a fun uh, session today. We actually, um, am I allowed to tell them we didn't make the right food yet? What do you hear? You laugh. Yes. He's still alive. We made, Lacey, here, listen, this is what's great about Lacey. She's really good at improvising. And um, what happened? The oven got locked. I don't know who pushed it. I've never even seen that screen on our oven before, but... Something happened. We didn't make the chicken pot pie. No, it's in there. It's just not done. Okay. But we did make this. What is this? Did you drop it off? <laughs> well, great. We were supposed to tell them about that. <laughs> well, <laughs> So Shabbat, if you've read The Return, you know about that we have Shabbat on Friday nights, and I make roast, and that is leftover roast from Friday, turned into a beef stroganoff thing. That's awesome. It's great. Because we don't have chicken pie ready. Chicken pot pie. And guess what? I thought six people that are here now that weren't going to be here, now they're here. So guess what? We have beef stroganoff. We got a party here. It's awesome. That's so good. Yeah. yeah. Well, how do you want to start? Um, so I guess, we, you know, we're just so thankful to be with you guys. Thanks for tuning in. I know it's getting close to Christmas. Yeah. And we, um... We have one other week where hardly any, I think next week hardly anyone is going to be here. Even Josh isn't going to be here. He's doing a Christmas production at our so Gianna. church. Oh. Yeah, Gianna's going to be in it too. Actually, Gianna and I are going to be playing a song together. Aww. Oh. If you follow Josh on Instagram, then you probably saw his uh, lead guitar oh, line for the production, which was, what is that? It's Heart for the Bells or? It's a medley. Yeah, anyway, it's really cool. It's on my Instagram. You can follow me at whatever my Instagram name is. <laughs> so this week we talked about eternal perspective and the song is Breath of Eternity. I think we're going to start by singing, you know, together. So is that what? Yeah. Rock on, Josh. <laughs> um, so next week I wanted to say this uh, up front because... Next week is, is, is deals with really uh, heavy topics, and um, and I know that some of you got your your emails, and some of you aren't doing your your study the way we design, like like in the morning and the evening and daily and all that. Like personally, hi Atticus. Okay. Atticus is calling me. Oh, okay, you got it. Yep. You got a guitar. Yes. Okay. Um. And the thing is that I know everybody's schedules are different, but I really like the Bible script videos. Those are my favorite. So, of course, I'm not going to watch myself necessarily, but I do so that I can know what you guys learned that week. But, um, but the Bible script videos are so cool to me because I, I really designed those so that I could have them because I really wanted them for myself. Um, but if you, if you are like me and you went and you watched them right away, there's, they cover some really uh, heavy topics. And so... I want to say beforehand, um, just that, you know, it, it, it is it is something that, you know, that we're going to talk about later. Um, I was going to have somebody supposed to come tonight, but she's not here. But if you have questions about that, 
beforehand, please email us. Please talk to us beforehand. Um, we want to hear what you have to say. And if you did watch the videos and you have questions, please email us and talk to us about it beforehand. I mean, even now, if you have a question. So I wanted to make sure we said that because a lot of us aren't going to be here next week. Um, I will be here and Atticus will be here because everywhere I am he is <laughs> at this point in his life. Um, and so, yeah, so. <laughs> Praise you, everybody. <laughs> Yay! So, um, so yeah, so we're just going to start this week with, um, with worship and some of the prayers. Katie Lesher is watching. Hi, Katie. Yay, yeah, Katie! Ashley, what's up? You should come meet Atticus. We should hang out. Let me see. Um, so we're going to start with... Yeah, I'm trying to figure out where to put the camera. I'm going to put it over here. Can we... Okay. Well, we can see everybody. So can you just turn your chair a little bit this way? Will that work? You guys mind if I put you over here?
Thank you, God, for the message of having an eternal perspective. And um, thank you for speaking to me this week through Isaiah 6 and Revelation 4 even. And just reminding me of what it's like to, to, to just put my thoughts on you, God, and put my thoughts on eternity and how it just purifies my motives and reminds me of what's important, God. So... I just pray you bless us as we talk about this today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hey, dude. Can you talk about that song at all? <laughs> hey, the guitar. <laughs> yeah. Again, if you guys are musicians, um, we are providing on the website all the uh, chords and <laughs> lyrics for everything. This is a super simple one. If you're just starting out playing guitar, there's really only like three chords of the song. I play it a little bit different than I wrote on here, but you could play this entire song with only two chords, <laughs> which is great. That's, that's the kind of these songs I, like you wrote it, I worship you? too, because <laughs> you can forget about your hands, and you can just sing. Yeah. I liked what somebody just said. They said, um, this... They said, even with the audio being so bad, I, I have the chills. <laughs> hey, what's wrong with the audio? No, it's... <laughs> they saw their phone. Yeah, yeah, I am I'm offended. Their phone. <laughs> I'm offended. No, he's not. But the thing is that I like about that is that it's not about that. <laughs> it's about just turning our hearts towards God and just um, inviting Him to... to um, to speak to our hearts. And so when he starts to touch your spirit, you, you start to feel the chills. <laughs> so that's awesome. That's very common. Um, well, hey, what's up, Kristen? I like seeing you on here. Um, what's up, Gulfport, Mississippi? So how many people here um, how many people that did the study this week had, um, what was your, what was stood out to you about, or if you, actually if you've read Isaiah 6 and, you know, what's something that stood out to you about that? Hey, Danielle. So good to see everybody on. You had a small group gather. Awesome. Yes. That's awesome, James. What's up, Brianna? Monica. So good to see you on here again. Brad Monica's on. Oh, Monica. Yes, I'm, I'm... What's up, Ashley? Oh, hi, Ashley's mom, and she says hi. We've been praying cool. for you. So cool. So... Is this done? Um, I don't know, is it brown on top? Pretty brown. Yay! Pie's no, done. Do we take out again? No. I am like the Oh, so I love you. I love you, Monica, too. I love I love looking at your Instagram and seeing what you guys post. It's so awesome. Yay! What's up? You get another... Hi, Kristen. <laughs> Let's say it again. So I think I'm going to... Um, what, what do you think, Jenna? Did anything... What about Isaiah 6? Do you have anything for that? Um, just about the, the holiness of God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that um, was what Ben read... I don't know how. Sorry, to fix oh, that. Good. So Ben read that this week. Woohoo! Yeah. Do you? Yeah. So basically, um, yeah, it's on the holiness of God and holiness and unholiness can't mix. So the when you can't mix holiness and unholiness, there's separation, right? So our whole lives need to be an offering of holiness unto God, not out of um, works or motives, but out of pure love and desire and devotion for God. Um, so as our lives, as we live our whole lives, just in devotion to Him, it leads to holiness. So, yeah, and it's all about falling in love with Jesus. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> hey, what's up? What's up? <laughs> well, there we go. <laughs> I think we were right. Well, I love what Jenna said, and the thing about... The thing about holiness um, in that passage particularly is Isaiah like freaks out when he sees God in his holiness. And this is exactly, yeah. how, well, I, I can't say, I don't know exactly how Isaiah felt, but when I read it, it reminds me of the time when I met God for the first time as, a, as an atheist. 
And what he hmm. says is, woe is me, because yeah. I'm a man of unclean lips. Like, I have spoken things that are completely false about God, and I have spoken things that are completely, like, unholy, and here I am in the presence of a holy God, and it just makes you want to shrink away almost mm. and, like, hide. And that is what, you know, that feeling of it just being too bright, like, almost like you can't look into the sun because it hurts your eyes. Like, mm. that's how it feels in your spirit when you're in front of, like, a holy God. It's, like, too bright, and you want to hide, you know. Um, and so what happens in that moment is there's this mercy that happens where an angel takes fire from the altar and touches his mouth with it, and it says, this will take away your sin. And so there's this, there's this message of, of a fire that's purifying him, the fire of God that's purifying his, his heart, and he feels like he's going to burn up, but instead he's refined. And what's left is this love and devotion to God. It's the very beginning of Isaiah. Isaiah, if you read about Isaiah, he had a crazy like life with God. As soon as he met yeah. God, his life was crazy. Like I think he was the one that walked around naked for like whatever. <laughs> like there's crazy stuff in there. <laughs> you crazy should read stuff about it. But anyway, it was like this whatever he says, I'm doing it. What I mean, God's real, he's holy, and he's He's, he's taken away my sins in the sense that he's taken everything, like, because that's what I am. Like, I'm nothing. Like, he's everything, I'm nothing, and if he gives me life, it's his. So, um, that, was, that was the most amazing thing to me about, and I loved when, um, when Ben was reading it. I remember we were, I was, I was reading the scripture behind the camera, and, he was, and I was talking to him about what this meant to me, and getting him to imagine what it was, would be like to stand in front of God. Wow. And um and as and as he did, you could see this awe and reverence come over him. And Ben is a really amazing guy. He's he's a I he, I think he's gonna be here next week um, to help me because I think he's gonna play guitar when we sing next week. Um, but he um he's he's a, he he's a scientist actually. We talked about that when we were on tour. And um, he has a reverence and an awe for God as Creator because he knows a lot, a lot about science and about creation and that that kind of um, the way that God put things together and how awesome it actually is so when he was saying it you could see that reverence and that is that is what it is you know but at the at the same time there's that reverence this is why we need Christ because when you come before God with that no realizing who you are we come and we will it's like we will burn up into in the in the fire of that holiness but that's why christ came so that he could take away our sin so that we could stand in front of god and um and survive <laughs> because we wouldn't be able to otherwise so um wow i'm i'm um i'm reading you guys as some of you guys's comments and i'm um it's really cool to see that some some of you on here have talked about or talking about how you've had experiences like this before and um, that's that's what's amazing too is that he does invite us into him, into a relationship with him like that, where we can have access to him through Christ. And so that's the most profound thing to me. Yeah. Um, I, it might be. Was anybody having to add what she's talking about? Wow. Well, said yes. Well, I mean this this passage. I think it's one of, it's, it's such a good picture in the Old Covenant about the heart of God, you know, because I think that it's crazy that this happens in the year that King Uzziah dies, and I think every time I read this passage, this was another one of those ones that whenever we first started doing the study, it's like, oh, Lacey picked all the passages that were important to me whenever I was growing up. This one was like my eighth grade. This is what I, this is the passage that God used to like call me into ministry. Oh, um, me too. Really? Not in eighth grade. <laughs> Not in eighth grade. No, but I mean, is. the thing is, just like that's good. there's a, there's a space where um, there's no one on the throne, yeah. and so that God shows up, mm. you know. And it's um, there's a book called God Chasers where Tommy Tenney talks about this, where it says that uh, the train of his robe filled the temple, and that word filled is this idea of like he was coming. But he kept coming. It was like it was, it's not like he just like walked in. It's like like the train, like of a long bridal gown, where it just like it keeps coming and coming and coming, and it's just like um, the glory of God coming. And, and Isaiah's reaction 
mm. what it was, but God's reaction. You think all the way back to the very beginning, to the garden, where Adam and Eve were hiding, yeah. but God came coming after them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so there's this encounter, that, like Lacey's talking about, of being with the Lord. Our, our response may be to, like, to try to hide. His response is to come after us. And then he touches he touches them, and, and Isaiah goes from like, not me, I can't do this, to like, here am I, send me. Yeah, that's you know? right. And so it's just like the encounters with his holiness, encounters with his beauty, encounters with his love, encounters with his glory, yeah. right? So it's like thinking about how powerful the glory of God is. And um, so all week, just thinking about eternal perspective. Um, I feel like my week has been just so full of things, it's just so easy to get caught up in things that are happening here. Mm -hmm. um, things that are not going to last. I mean, like, I think sometimes, why am I spending my life Worrying about things aren't going to last in a hundred years. They're yeah. going to be most of them won't be around in, yeah. you know, ten minutes. You know, but like, why do we get caught up in that? Um, but the glory of God and like the the perspective of this beautiful story. You know, it's it's not an easy passage, but it's it's the beauty of God and the, and the reality of of the heavenly. Um, it just it adds this story adds dimension. I think whenever we hear Jesus talk about earth on earth as it is in heaven, this is a picture of what's happening in heaven. Yeah, <laughs> the voice. Of the one, it's like 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 the, yeah. the it's shaking things and there's smoke and yeah. it's just crazy glory. So it's good. The whole earth is full of his glory. That's that's true. <laughs> that's true. Well, I remember um, I remember one of the things that <laughs> if I didn't have that encounter with God, I would not have I would have not survived that day. But I definitely wouldn't have understood why somebody. I remember thinking this when I was 16, going, why would a grown person get up early on a Sunday morning and dress in uncomfortable clothes <laughs> to try to impress a bunch of people who don't even talk to you and sit in a building where you feel crappy about yourself. Why would you do this of your own free will? I was like, what's wrong with people? I didn't get it. And so I felt like <laughs> Leah's laughing, right? You know what I mean? And so I remember when I was in this church and I had this thing, you know, the supernatural things happening. The, the, the preacher was talking straight to everything that was going on in my mind. And then when I come out, when I, when I have this encounter at the end of, of, of that visit to church with God, it was the most incredible experience I, in, in my entire life was to acknowledge and realize God is real and I'm in front of him. Yeah. It was the scariest most amazing, terrifying, and beautiful, powerful thing. It, it blew my mind. It, 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 it shattered everything I knew about reality. And so this is the cool thing that happened to me was that I, I did drugs to have those experiences that weren't anywhere close to that experience. The drugs that people, and I think that's a lot of times when people seek after drugs, seek after a, a you know a high experience they're trying to find this experience we're wired to have with god we're, they're trying to find this experience yeah. we're wired to have with the supernatural mm -hmm. and to to have these heavenly encounters and so i i feel like it's it's the most ridiculous counterfeit mm -hmm. to think that they could compare and that's part of josh's testimony too is that when he um we decided to to give his life to God for the first time. He told God, I, he, I'll give this up. I'll give all these drugs up for you, but you better make it worth it, <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in my life that just, I felt like were fun things or just felt like it was like the only like excitement in my life. And I just knew that they weren't right for me. And that's exactly what I said one night. I'm like, God, I feel like I have my foot halfway in. And I know that I'm not like, you know, I don't remember if we talked about this last week, but like there's a difference between believing in God and having a relationship with Jesus. You know, like right. there's the scripture, what's the scripture that, it, that it says that even the demons believe in God and they tremble. Yeah. Um, and there's just like a part of my life where I was like, yeah, of course I believe in God. But then there was a difference between having a walking relationship. You know, that's kind of what yeah. this whole study is about is what that looks like. And just, you know, you wake up and think about God, you go to bed, you think about God, and you cultivate mm -hmm. that relationship, mm -hmm. and all your decisions change whenever you're putting that type of focus on it. But I remember saying to him, God, I'll, I'll stop doing all this stuff and give these things up, but you better make it worth it. And it was just, it was such a ignorant thing to say, but he was just so, he was, 
I mean, he's a good God, and so he actually answered my prayer, even though it was a silly thing to pray. And, like, I remember that week of just, like, finally just going after him with all my heart and mm -hmm. seeking him instead of going to a party or just, you know, spending time in worship or going to meet with other people um, for Bible study. And I was just like, every single thing I did was heightened. Every single experience I had before, mm -hmm. you know, it just showed how, how lame everything else was. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, oh my gosh, why did I do this like 12 years ago? What in the world was I waiting so long for thinking that I was going to have a boring Christian life, you know, whenever I finally like made the plunge. <laughs> right, because yeah. it is the most ridiculous Un unpredictable, amazing thing to just say, whatever you want to do with my life, God, mm -hmm. do it. <laughs> and to be able to say yes, mm -hmm. to be able to say yes to whatever he's calling you to do, and go on those adventures, it will be, it will be mm -hmm. a challenge and it will make you grow in your spirit to where you're taller in your spirit than you were yeah. before. You're stronger yeah. in your soul than you were before yeah. because your spirit and your soul are tied together, so it's all based, you know, spirit, soul, and body. So when your spirit is in line and starts growing, your soul starts to um, get healthier and stronger, and then your body starts to actually exude that health too. I mean, I remember having so much joy after that. Joy is a huge deal, it Jenna. Is. Every time you come around me, I start laughing. I don't know what your deal is. <laughs> Jenna carries joy. I don't know. She's <laughs> you need some joy? Just look at Jenna for a minute. She's, she's a present from heaven every time she comes around. I was telling her. But that's part of it. You know, that weird laughter that you get. You know, that, you know I used to... I used to smoke pot or weed. I used to smoke weed all, and I and I remember just laughing for nothing, and then afterwards feeling so, mm -hmm. so just empty and lost without that. And I was like, I gotta, okay, well, how do I do that again? You know, that was that was the the search. It wasn't, and it wasn't. Um, it didn't feel real. I mean, it didn't feel real. Not like in a. It felt like you knew it was temporary. You knew it wasn't the. It wasn't real joy. You knew that. You knew that. And and it was also it brought it made me completely sad and down outside of it. And so what's cool about this difference is it's a totally a counterfeit of the joy that God gives yeah. you. Yeah. I get in giggle fits with Jenna all the time over stuff that God's doing that's incredible. And I you know, I can't even talk about it. I can't even look at her sometimes or I'll start crying or start laughing. Because he does that. That's one of the things that he does. He gives us joy. And if you want it, you can ask for it. But it's, it's, it's a powerful gift. And it is also a weapon yeah. um, against what, the, what darkness would try to put on you. Yeah. If you can laugh. And I, I think I talked about that when I was reading the Screw Tape Letters. Because Screw Tape Letters is a book of, by C.S. Lewis about spiritual warfare. But it's done in a funny way. It's like laughing through what's what's happening yeah and it's a really powerful mm. <laughs> it's a really powerful idea yeah. do, do you guys have any experience with any of this Does any, yeah, well she, yeah she was like, go I'm ahead. Not okay go ahead well um i kind of had like the opposite experience of josh like thankfully i i've known god all my life and i've been in a committed relationship with jesus ever since like middle school when i was really serious about it and so I grew up in the ways of the Lord, but, you know, being in high school and being a teenager, you kind of like see everything around you and you're like, everyone else is doing this and I'm walking with God. And I, I've been happy in my relationship with God. But um, when I was in high school, yeah. I got curious and I was like, you know, like, why is everyone partying? Like, I have the joy of the Lord. Like, <laughs> like well, I, I'm having a great time. Like, I'm at youth group having a fun time. But so I was like, okay. So my friend invited me to this party and I was like, okay, I'm just going to be a wallflower. Like, I'm just going to go. And I don't recommend doing this. <laughs> I was just like, I'm just going to go and like see what the hype is about. And the whole time I was there, I was like, this is it. Like, <laughs> like y'all, y'all just, uh, you just sit around and like get high and get wasted. Like that's not fun. And so it's just kind of funny because like that was kind of God's like laughing at me moment. Like, 
girl, you know, I give you the joy and I give you the, the fullness of life. Like, you don't even need to try to see what these other people are doing. Come on. So I just think that's funny. Well, it is funny that you say that because if you, if you do party, uh, it is funny to go to a party and not party, not, not drink or drink. Yeah. Cause you party look, sober and everybody looks so stupid. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Everybody's falling all over the place looking at, like, chill, like, like be badly behaved children. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. Oh my gosh. She's like, I would have a giggle fight with Lee too. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, so I think that's an incredible story. You guys, Gianna saying that by itself is a huge, huge deal because Gianna has seen lots of darkness in her life. And she's not the kind of person that never saw anybody do anything wrong or she didn't know. Like she she has seen deeper darkness than I've ever seen. And I just want you to know she she's a miracle that she has that to say about that topic. <laughs> she's beautiful. And I'm really proud of, you know, to get to know you. Thank you know, you. thankful for her. Yes, laughter always heals us. It's fun to be a goofball. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> you know, people don't know that about Jesus, but it says that he had joy above all his brothers, yeah. Yeah. which means he was the most <laughs> joyful person that's ever lived. Atticus. Atticus. Atticus is like, but me, Mom. I'm joyful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you <be> more. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> like, like Monica said, she's thankful for joy. Oh, that makes yeah. me so excited. Yeah. I love that. That's no. awesome. Yes. Okay. Well, Jill, if you have to hold back laughing at church, yes, then I just suggest you not, because if yeah. you don't hold back, someone else won't hold back, and then it'll make sense. It doesn't make sense yeah. when it's just you, but somebody else is doing it too. I promise. You should just let it go. Yeah. Just start laughing. It's good. They might kick you out, but you can do it in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> Done that. <laughs> they might kick you out, but you can do that in the parking lot. Jesus is out there too. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be a treat. Yeah. 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 Oh, what, do you, what, do you, what do you say? Yeah. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's a good word, Atticus. Preach. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, more. He's yeah. got something else to say. What do you want to say? Preach. The other day, I, 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 I think you said I love you the other day. And I was like, you're five months old. How did you say I yeah, you? I love you. <laughs> I heard somebody say that Revelation 12 is their, their yeah. favorite video so far. Um, no. Yeah. Josh, how do you time this? Oh, you just come here. Trust it. You're good. Oh, here you go. Um, what's funny about that video is that was that was actually the very first Bible script video we shot um, for this series, and I want to say it was last year on New Year's when we were coming back here. Uh, we stopped at our friend's house, Tim Willard, who's uh, Lyric's dad, and um, Lacey had this idea. Reflect love back, and you have a name for it or anything. We were just talking about. And she's like, I want people to read the scriptures. I want them to read it to the camera like it's a conversation. It's not like reading it in the book. And she's like, I, and I just, you know, and she's explaining the idea. I didn't really understand it very well, but she's like, let's. Hey, we got Tim here. He's really animated. And so he read one, and then uh, and then lyric, his daughter read one, and I just love that sort of juxtaposition of this little girl reading Revelation 12, which. I feel yeah. like when you read that scripture, it's very solemn and serious, mm -hmm. and you're like um, talking about the dragon, and you know it's this like scary imagery. But something happens when this little, you know, eight-year-old or nine-year-old girl is reading it and saying these words that it was like, and you put like upbeat music to it, it sounds really, it sounds uh, completely different, like the meaning of it. And so, mm -hmm. anyway, I just saw a few people on here say that was their favorite video, and so I just want to say that was one of the first ones that we did. I'm reading one of the questions. Um, he said, Thomas says, Let's see if I can see it here. How did you guys build such a good relationship with God? I feel like I'm, a, I'm, I'm lukewarm, is probably what he said. Lukewarm in my face right now. I felt amazing when I was baptized. 
but now I feel like I'm at the point where I just believe but don't have a relationship. I'd love to have steadfast faith you guys always seem to have. Well, that's it. <laughs> Atticus wants to answer that one. <laughs> I think that it, that's a great question. Yeah. And I think um, we all have gone through times where it feels like we may be going through the motions. Um, and sometimes, especially, I talk about this in mystery, when something is gets broken, like your heart gets broken, or and you feel like you just need to keep going through the motions. That's actually how you heal from a broken arm, is that when it starts healing, you have to do physical therapy and you have to go through the motions before you can actually use it. And there are times, seasons like that, um, when we do that. And, and if you don't give up, there will come that time of healing we're actually using it. But I think as far as a relationship, this is the whole point of what we're doing here. It's why I wrote The Return and why we're doing Reflect Love Back is because you can't, you can't think of relationship with God and not realize um, the word re- <laughs> I'm really talking to you guys. And, and realize that relationship, if you talk about it with anyone else, about any other relationship you have, you know how to build relationship in there. If you don't, it's, it's really about communicating, spending time, and, and you know, being invested in, in, in being intentional to, to have a relationship with somebody. Um, and so I think that Brad has a lot to say about that. This is one of the things I was going um, <laughs> yeah, to um, suggest to you guys is Brad has written a book called Culture of the Few, and it's about cultivating relationships in general with people. But it's exactly the way we do it with God, and I think that's why he put us in... It, he wants us to have a relationship with others so that we can learn about relationship with him. Is that right? What do you think? Can yeah. you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> hey guys, I want to talk about this question real quick. Um, and Because one of the, the themes of the New Testament that is really important is this idea of our relationship with Jesus. So Jenna, come close for a second. All right. Because I think sometimes like there's this phrase that gets used over and over again, um, like in Christ or in Jesus. And there's this idea of our relationship with God. Sometimes we're like, hey, God, can you please come here? And really he's committed to be closer to us than we can ever imagine. Yeah. And so it's like, I have a relationship, you know, like I talked to my dad on the phone today and a relationship with my dad. I don't live in the same state with him, but like I know my dad's heart, and so whenever I call and talk to him, like I don't have to catch him up on everything because I have a real relationship with him, and it like it stays there. And there's times whenever, uh, like I'm gonna go see him at Christmas time, and there'll be there'll be there'll be spaces where we'll be be around each other for three or four days straight, and then I won't see him for a few months, yeah. but he's still my dad, yeah. right? And this idea of relationship is like God's commitment to us, His union with us. If you just read the Book of Ephesians and you circle. Every time it says in Christ or in Jesus, you understand that we're like, I don't ever have to scream. Like if I'm having a relationship with Jenna and I'm screaming at her like she's in another room, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. it's because I'm not aware how close, how, how close we yeah. are. Right? And so sometimes I'm praying like, God, would you please come? And he's like, I'm right here. I'm in you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And so there's, there's lots of, um, there's lots of encouragement because our relationship, it, it, it is easy for us not to be aware. Mm. But what's so beautiful, and, and we've been reading and studying um, John 13, 14, and 15, and then the book of First John, mm. just about the word abide. And yeah. so the word abide, oh what it means, it's, it's like be present with. Yeah. you know. And so it's like he is committed. He keeps saying like, hey, you abide in me, but he doesn't make it just a one-sided thing. He said, I, I'm gonna abide yeah. in you. And so like, yeah. there are times, really honestly, in the last couple of weeks where I'm like, teaching about this and then I'm so aware like man yeah. I'm so much more aware of what's happening in this realm right now so much more aware of my, like I would feel overwhelmed or feel like stressed or whatever but man really what it's all about is just being aware like he is closer than I can be to any human being he's yeah. closer to me than that he's more committed to me than mm-hmm. that That so it's like I would not um, scream at the top of my lungs trying to get someone's attention who is that close yeah. right I, I don't have to I can whisper Right? Uh, and yeah. so with God, like there's times maybe what's inside of you. David said he cried out, he shouted with all of his might. But like we don't have to do that because he can't hear us because he's so far away. Yeah. And so Thomas, and then there's other people who just you know, 
So, hey, I'm feeling that same thing. Like, I just want to encourage you. Um, let your let your let your faith not just be in how you're feeling right now. Let your faith be in his commitment to you, and then let his commitment to you stir up your heart for like um, love and passion, so that you can like just so you can choose to be present with him. That's the idea of abiding is not just you know, hey, we're gonna hang out, but like I'm gonna be present here. Uh, with you, and so he's, his invitation is: you be present with me, you abide in me, you dwell with me, and I'm gonna do that same thing with you. I'm gonna make my home in you. So I think that's so such a beautiful encouragement when you feel that way. And I felt that way not like 20 years ago, like two days ago, just feeling like, oh my gosh, are you are you there? He is there, and he never leaves us. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Can I add? Yeah. Um, I think also there's that place of just living in that place of faith. Sometimes we want to always feel the highs of you know because you can encounter the presence of God and feel the presence of God one day and you feel like you're on top of the mountain and the next day you're like what happened right and where's God where did he go and you know sometimes we go through these stages where he's like I just need you to trust me and have faith in me and believe in me and not live on the highs and lows of life and just living in that place of okay God I know that you're in me and I'm in you yeah. And when you encounter me and I encounter your holiness and your presence, it's it's an earth of refreshment to our souls. But there's also that place of knowing that he's constantly there, um, knowing that he'll never leave us or forsake us and living in yeah. that. Yeah. It's important stuff. Mm -hmm. It's important stuff because ultimately, again, like Lacey was saying, one of the reasons in doing this book was... You know, we have these encounters with God where we like his, his, his love comes and it changes our life. And that's the power of the gospel. But the, the power of the gospel is not just to save you and keep you out of hell. Mm. The power of the gospel is to restore you into relationship. Jesus said, yeah. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And I just want to say, like, the power of the gospel, like, for Lacey and the story that she has about, hey, I was, like, going to take my life. Like, the power of God in her life today is just as strong mm -hmm. as it was in that one day. Yeah. And so the reason why I Reflect Love Back is, like, about cultivating this relationship where we meet with him in the morning, we meet with him in the evening, and we really learn, those are intentional times, we really learn to walk all day with him. Yeah. He even says that he instructs our heart in the night seasons. Mm -hmm. So there are times where he'll speak to you in the night whenever, he'll talk to you about things in the, in the night that you can't handle when you're awake, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Because his love for you is perfect. Yeah. His love for you is just so, it's so there for you. And so I uh, really just want to encourage mm -hmm. you, people are asking questions about like, hey, I need this in my life. You know, what, what kind of church should I go to? Coming from different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. You know, really understanding that the beauty of this word, this is not just a book. This is like, it's alive. Those, this word is alive. And like when we take time to, to talk to him and invite him to speak to us, yes, find a church, find a, a believers who trust, who believe in this book and who believe that God is the one who spoke it. Mm -hmm. Believe in Jesus. Make that really, make that really plain. I'm not going to tell you what church to go to, but we'll tell you like, it's not about, um, it's not about all the extras. It's about the simplicity of knowing him. Yeah. You know, and, and, the, and Paul wrote a lot of the New Testament and he just says to the Philippians, he said, I've done all these things and I'd give it all up just mm -hmm. so I could know him yeah. <laughs> and the power of his resurrection, the yeah. fellowship of suffering and, and kind of like being willing to, to put our life there. So I just want to encourage you guys um, that anytime we feel, you know, like mm -hmm. there, there's an awareness of there's a lot happening around us. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I love being on here on Sunday nights because we read like, man, people who have stories. Some of you guys have birth stories that were amazing. Someone was telling like how the doctors told their mom they were gonna be stillborn, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But they're like, he's alive. And he's like, I'm a miracle, you know, that's, that's awesome. My daughter has a similar story that my wife shared some of last week. You know, just like, it's a miracle. And some of you are like, man, I just, I know what it likes, it's like to be like the guy at the party. Like, we come from all kinds of different places, right? Yeah. But the power of the gospel isn't just in getting us saved. Yeah. It's in like the fact that we can have a life and a relationship with God. Yeah. And that really is by his commitment to us and that union we have with Jesus. Yeah. Uh, it's not dependent just on me. Mm. It's really dependent on him, yeah. you know? So, anybody else have any thoughts about this? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see someone over there. There's, there she is. There she is. I, I just thought that was really powerful, what, what everybody was saying. And, and just about the, the idea of having a, you know, in a marriage, too, also. Like, when you are in, your, in, in relationship with somebody for a long time, you have these moments that you look back to to remember 
why you fell in love in the first place yeah. or why why you know that they love you <laughs> why you know that you love them it's like mom where you love you <laughs> And so this is also something that I think is um, really important in, in our relationship with God is that we have, like Jenna was talking about having the highs and we can't live there. And it's like if you expected that in your marriage, you know, any married person who's been married for an entire lifetime would say that it's not that way and that's important. That's an important part of how you grow from just an infatuated moment about highs to really having a long-term relationship with somebody that you can depend on in every season, in the valleys, in the, in the mountaintops and all that. So do you give up on your marriage whenever you don't have those feelings or it's mundane? Or do you say, what do we do to get there in the first place? Like, how did, how do we go back to that place? How do we, how do I seek this person that I committed to? And then, and, and in that way, you know, how do I do the things that they love and, and, mm. and, and find joy in doing things that they have joy in and making their joy, my joy, yeah. you know, those kind of things. Um, so I think that's a lot of the reason why, you know, cause we, we have a hard time with relationships in general. Yeah. We don't know how to transfer that over to our relationship with God because we've never right. seen it in a marriage or we've never seen it in a, even just, I mean, me and Josh have been together every day almost for, I mean, we've at least talked every day <laughs> um, for 11 years, over 11 years now. And I think the, that's the longest I've ever had that kind of a relationship with anyone except for Jesus. And and to be able to to look over and see that continuity and all the different things that we've been through and all the things that we've overcome together makes when I look back that so much more solid. And it, and it is a choice, a consistent choice to look back to those moments of heights and say, mm -hmm. well, I know on this day I committed yeah. and I was covenanted and I knew the truth. I knew that I knew that I knew. I talked about this moment for me in the mystery when I was questioning my faith and I wasn't sure what to believe anymore. And I was, um, I was trying to decide if I should continue to have a relationship with God or try to have a relationship with God. I wasn't sure if I believed in him anymore. And um, in that moment, I remember all these memories coming back to me of times when life was stable and sturdy and full of peace and full of joy and full of love moments with God like that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, without that, there is nothing to stand mm -hmm. on. And I know um, that I'm going to choose him again. Mm -hmm. And as I chose him again, um, it took a long time before I actually was flooded with that joy again and that love and that reassurance and that height of life, mm. you know, experience with God and grew past it. Yeah. Um, but now when I look back on that time, yeah. I'm going to cry. Mm -hmm. When I look back on that time, I just find him so faithful. Yeah. Even when I wasn't faithful, yeah. mm -hmm. he's faithful. Yeah. And just like yeah. Brad was sharing, we cry out to him, yeah. but he's right there. Yeah. And, and he is, even when we don't feel it, yeah. that if you can trust mm. that he's there, then you can... You can push past those valley seasons yeah. mm -hmm. and find yourself on a new mountain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're like, wow, it wasn't yeah. worth it to go through. It's so powerful and beautiful, and it's real. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. so real. Yeah. So, anyway, just mm -hmm. wanted to say that. Yeah. <laughs> Is there something else? Are there, are there any more questions, Brad? Anything we can answer? I think we have like 10 minutes left, roughly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, there's a lot of stuff coming up about churches. And I'm trying to figure out how to answer them all. But you guys are doing awesome in the comments. You're just coming really fast. So, um, so Frank, I know that you've been, you're saying that you've been really wanting to be a part of something like a small group for a long time. Oh, look at that. Um, I just want to encourage you, you know, if there are people at your church, even if it's not an official small group, you know, there's something that, and I'll, and I'll type this in now. I'll, I'll type this down. Uh, Fred's talking, comments. and I'm just showing the baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's normal. <laughs> so I'm typing this in, in there, but there's there's a place you know, even if it's not an official small group, but what you guys are you know saying about like being you know like wanting to be around something like this, this is a meal. This is not mm -hmm. like uh, an official church program. Um, 
this is a meal and people having conversations. And so I want to encourage you in a couple yeah. things. One, I just typed in something from our flood back to the word worship and fellowship. You know, one of the things that we teach people to do, if you want to be a part of something like this, again, um, you don't have to like make it really complicated. You can just get together and share a meal. If there's, mm. it's really awesome. Mm. And scripture actually talks about it. Lacey's talked about this um, before. Um, when you get together, everybody brings something. Yeah. You know, what about even, even as a meal? There's been times you've gotten together and had everybody bring ingredients for a soup and we just make a soup and we'll eat, eat soup. It doesn't have to be really complicated. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes you can get together and we can worship for hours and sometimes we might play one song. Sometimes we never might not sing at all. Um, it's not a formula, but just like what we're talking about in relationship with God, it's, it is about finding some people that we can be real with and go deep in relationship with God. And so I want to encourage you guys that um, if your church offers small groups or something like that, then yeah, yeah plug in. If uh, someone had a good comment, and I'm sorry, it's going so fast, um, but someone said, hey, yeah, Frank, you should be an advocate for a small group in your church. It sounds like Frank has tried that. But even if it's, you know, not something official, Frank, I love what you said. He's like, man, I don't even, I don't even care. He's like, ready to join a Magic the Gathering group, and he doesn't even care about it. He just wants, yeah. fellowship. he just wants to yeah. sing. And that yeah. word, that word is all in the Bible yeah. Yeah. Um, as fellowship. He wants yeah. us a koinonia. He wants this place mm -hmm. of, of gathering around um, something and following Jesus together. So that's, that's really powerful. Mm -hmm. But don't make it hard. Word, worship, and fellowship. Um, you have to start some big thing. You have to start a ministry to do that. You can just get yeah. together and have a meal with some friends. Um, and that, by the way, that's why the recipes are in there. Are in there. Right? That's right. That's exactly <laughs> why. And uh, when I, one of the things... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, by um, the way, Jason says he loves Magic the Gathering, so maybe Jason should join the Magic the Gathering. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So one of the things that Brad said um, about everybody bringing something, that was the thing that we were, we were contemplating the other day when we were praying. And we we're gonna take communion, mm -hmm. and um, and I was just praying about over the communion. And I was just praying about what we're doing with Reflect Love Back, is that so many people walk away from faith because of something a leader did, some kind yeah. of Christian leader yeah. that they were looking to teach them <coughs> about God, and they saw something bad happen with a leader or with somebody that they looked up to, and they walk away from God because of something someone else did. And so what I want to do with Reflect Love Back is I want to say you can know God for yourself. Yeah. And you can actually look at people and recognize, wow, we all need help. We all need forgiveness. We all... So when something, somebody falls, you can say, wow, they're just like, you know, just God used them to lead and now I need to lead somewhere or something. You know yeah. what I mean? I need to. Yeah. But when you come together, there's a scripture in Corinthians that talks about communion. Mm. It's really kind of scary <laughs> scripture about communion that you shouldn't take it with the wrong heart yeah. and I think the whole point of communion was that communion is community it's being it's recognizing we are in communion with Christ and with you and another so when we're when we come together and eat together um, it's like saying it's kind of like it, he says don't come to this place hungry eat at home and then come together and have communion mm -hmm. So we're not coming to feed off one person who has something for us. We're coming together to bring something too. Mm -hmm. We come with an overflow. So when you go to a church, you should bring something there and be the church. Mm -hmm. You know, you are the church. The church, what is the church? It's not a building. I mean, right now, like, like Brad said, we're in our home and, and we're having a meal and we're all sharing what what God's doing in our hearts and it's hitting different people different ways yeah. mm -hmm. and it's important that we all bring something so if, in case somebody needs what you have you have it to share and and, and so it's not just about it's not about exalting people mm -hmm. to some place that we can't hold up and become you know saviors when we have a savior it's about saying we all have a savior mm -hmm. we all been through something we all have something to share so this is the idea so in, in, a, in a metaphorical way if you have one of these meetings at your house and you say, everybody brings something, that's the idea. And that's why we're reading your comments. We're reading your comments to see what you're sharing. And that's why I read online and see what you're reminding me of. Because it's not about me or so. anybody else here being exalted to some place, but about us exalting the fact that God mm. has done amazing things in our lives. Yeah, we're exalting on. that Jesus did come great on. things in our lives. Whenever somebody celebrates me and says, you've done so many great things, and I just think, 
What did I actually do? I hated myself. I wanted to die. I hated people. And God came in and rescued me from that moment and told me and showed me how valuable others are. That's it. I did nothing to be proud of. It was something God did. And that that's and, and then as he took me through things, I just shared what he did. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. I just shared what he did, not what I did. Because, I mean, I did share what I did, and it wasn't ever anything to be proud of. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was something that, you know, why? I, had an, I was, like, in the middle of an, an emotional affair. And even in, in the return, I'm, I'm talking about how I'm a mess. I, I'm, I'm struggling to overcome depression and suicide. And mm-hmm. still, in, you know, in my relationship with Jesus, I'm, I'm, I'm getting attacked by all kinds of different darkness. And I'm watching God help me overcome. It's not even about me overcoming. It's about Him doing it. Because he's, he's true. What he says is true. It actually mm-hmm. works. His words actually work. They are alive. And, and, it, and it is real. It's not, a, it's not a religion or self-help program. Yeah, come on. It's a powerful relationship with a God who loves us. And he, is, <laughs> he is wants mm-hmm. that for each one of us. Not so that we can exalt one church or one guy into mm-hmm. a position that he can't carry. But so that we can all come ourselves to him. And see what he does first. I'm sorry, I keep saying the same thing. <laughs> no, it's good. Hey, I'm gonna get the guitar because I want to close with a song. I know we're about to wrap up here. Um, I'm gonna get the guitar. I'm gonna ask uh, Mike to share something with you real quick. A little... <laughs> <laughs> and listen, there's a reason I want to do this too. I love Mike. Mike is an amazing person, and um, a lot part of this thing is what we talk about a lot is just this idea of feeling that maybe you don't have something to share or that there isn't. Um, I don't know, just that feeling of like when other people are doing stuff that you that you can't do it to. And Mike has so many amazing stories, so I'm just going to put him on the spot and let him share. I'm sorry to do this to you, buddy. Um, I'm going to get the guitar because I want to have Lacey sing. Every- I'm going to put Lacey on the spot too, actually, because I want to have her sing a song. We're going to write a song for you. Not write a song, but I'm going to have her sing over you guys. Um, yeah, so I'm going to get that guitar. And I just want to ask Mike if there's something that you can share, either related to um, cultivating, because a lot of people have asked that question, during the week, cultivating that relationship with Jesus, you know, having that, or a part of your story that you want to share of just that transition from whenever you were just like either halfway in. Actually, I don't know if I know your testimony. Um, sort of what that looks like for you either on the week or if you want to talk about like what that transition looked like to following Jesus. Hey guys, please welcome Mike. Woo! Mike with us! So, something I was thinking about before we were talking about, I think Brad was talking about abiding. Um, I was thinking about. Uh, yeah, I'm just thinking about that and recently I've been asking God um, Just to come into my life and just father me like as a father because I don't really know what that means I'm Like okay, Jesus Holy Spirit, but like what does it mean for God to like father me? Um, so yeah, I've just been asking him that and then just inviting him to be that in my life um, and Yeah, I don't know. Um, I always thought of like these spiritual things uh, like, I don't know, I guess just like having a relationship with God, the Father, had to be like these weird spiritual things. I was like, what does that look like? Um, But I feel like God's showed up in my life just recently. Um, Yeah, maybe over the past six months or something, I feel like he's been showing me what it looks like for him to father me in just real practical ways, not some crazy spiritual stuff, but just real practical like day-to-day things um so recently i had to get like insurance i had to get like a credit card i bought a new car i had to buy like a new camera and all these like real practical very like worldly things but like i just saw god um just really close throughout these processes uh and just yeah just really close to me throughout this just kind of i guess encouraging me and just showing me that he's just right there with me and not like leaving me on my own um you know, just to do like these 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 things, which if you've never done them before, they can be challenging, but it's just encouraging because like I knew that he was there with me, just like as my dad, kind of just like holding my hand through these processes, whatever whatever it was. Um, I think you can like uh, like even on the daily, just like recognize he's with you in these places. Um, which has been really crazy because I always thought like, oh my gosh, like some I don't know, just like crazy spiritual like whatever like what does this look like but then it's like okay let's go get a credit card today like let's go buy a car (laughs) just like real practical things um i feel like that's i've just seen god working um through stuff like that so yeah thank you mike yeah
okay. <laughs> <laughs> listen, yeah, that's yeah. really important what she just said, that that worked out okay, because sometimes it doesn't. And we just sit here, <laughs> listen, we just sit here in silence. Sometimes we fumble over our words. Sometimes we make mistakes. But that's all part of that process of learning how to talk to God and how to mm -hmm. step out in faith. So. Come on. We love you guys. Brad, can you do me a favor? I want you to, mm -hmm. I know this is the end of the video, can you post a link to Culture of the Few? Brad has an awesome yeah. book Lacey mentioned. It's called Culture of the Few. It talks a lot about what we're doing right here. It's a really good resource. He'll uh, either post a link there or on the Reflect Love Back site so that you guys can get that. I'm going to plug it for you because it's an amazing book and it's yeah. a really good companion to what we're doing here. It answers a lot of the questions you guys have about what church should I go to and how do I do this? How do I connect? Who do I, you know what I mean? How do you do this at home? Yeah. yeah. Um, so yes, we're going to close in prayer. Does anybody want to close us in prayer? Any takers? <coughs> yeah, yeah, close. Yeah. Yay, yeah. Amy! Yeah. Actually, one thing real quick before we close in prayer, um, because this is a lot of what we've talked about. If you want to, so especially those of you who are already going through Reflect Love Back to Study, one of the things we heard from a lot of people this week is they were like buying Reflect Love Back for their friends because they wanted to do this and have people going oh. through. They wanted mm -hmm. to go through and do it together with them. So um, we really encourage you to do that. Like any part of following Jesus, even this thing about learning to develop relationship with him, mm -hmm. it's powerful for me to mm -hmm. do that by myself. It's more powerful when I can then, yeah. once I'm doing that in my own life, invite other people into it. So I want to encourage you guys um, to find some friends and follow Jesus together. Okay, I'm gonna. Oh. Hey, guys, the, the chicken pot pie is finished. <laughs> Every time we turn it on the side, something spills out of it, but today it doesn't spill. All right. I don't know if that's a good sign. All right, Amy, take us to the pray. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my sister, Amy. Woohoo! Pray for Sam. Yeah, so Father God, we just thank you. We thank you for your presence tonight, God. We thank you. Uh, we, we thank you for your invitation for holiness. Uh, we thank you that even you know, like when Isaiah or when we say, God, we just, we can't, like we're unclean. Like you come and you cleanse us. And there's this invitation, like you, you have cleansed us and you say, hey, I, I see you as holy. I see you as blameless. So come, let's, let's look at the reflection. And, and then you invite us into this walking out in joy. So God, Lord, we thank you for the invitations for holiness. We thank you for the calling and the beckoning for joy. And God, I pray um, that, yeah, this week, Lord, we go forth in joy. God, we abide in your joy. That everything we do is just filled with joy. God, we just pray against the stress and the pressures and the, the expectations trying to meet everybody else's expectations. But God, we just come before you. And Jesus, we just ask, Lord, for every question that was asked tonight, for every um, heart longing for community, for every heart longing for small group, God, I pray that you will provide. Yes. God, whether it is the courage to start one on their own or the courage to step into one that already exists. Father God, we just come and we say for all of our hearts, we were created for a relationship. Yeah. We were created for, um, God, relationship with you, but relationship with one another to walk this out. And so God, we just bless yeah. every single person. We bless the relationships. We bless the desires for the relationships and the desire for community. And we just say, let your kingdom come yeah. in our hearts, God, on earth as it is in heaven. And we just... Yeah, go forth joyously and just sing your praises this week in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Woo yeah. Woo -hoo. We love you guys. Um, I'm gonna post that link. Actually, we had talked about this earlier, so we put up a. I'm gonna post the link. There's a, a promo code Love Back. I think is what it is, and you can get the book for like eight bucks. So Culture of the Few looks like it's free. Hey, yeah, there it is. There it is. Woo -hoo. So yeah, we love you guys. Uh, say good night. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next Sunday. Yeah. Actually, I'm sorry. I won't see you next Sunday, but Lacey will. I will. Yeah. Show her some love. See you guys. Thanks. Yeah.